Akalo Shavuoto Boketov, we are right now in Mishnah Yomi. This is uh, Masech Babakama, chapter 9, Perek Tet. We are Mishnah Vav and Zain, 6 and 7. Natan lo eta kenen velo natan lo eta chomesh. What happens right now, we're going to speak about, again, talking about that somebody swore falsely that he didn't owe any money, and then afterwards he confessed. And now he has to travel, right, to pay. So what happens if the guy he swore falsely and he confessed? He paid the principal, but he did not pay the Fifth, right? He forgave the keren, the principal, but not on the chomesh, the fifth. What does he forgave him this and that, meaning the principal and the fifth, except for less than a shavet pruta, the principal? He doesn't have to go running after him to pay him whatever remains. On six now? Yes, on six. Why? Because in all of these cases, the thief only has to pay. The fifth, right, which is which is or less than a pruta's worth, and therefore he's not obligated to pursue a distant because the obligation applies only when he has to pay the principal, right, and not where he has to pay the fifth. Meaning, if the principal was forgiven, he doesn't have to run at the fifth, right, which is the chomesh, the fifth, the twenty percent, is a penalty. So that you don't have to actually run after him, pursue him. On the principal, you have to run after him and do that. But what about the reverse case? Now tell me what the chomesh. What does he only paid him the fifth, and right, and he didn't give him the principal. Or he forgave the fifth, and he didn't forgive him on the principal. He forgave on both, except for a Shavet Puta on the principal. He has to run after him to pursue him, to pay him back. Because since in the principal, you still have a Shavet Puta, you have to go and you have to pay him back. Or Remember, Shavet Puta is based. Well, yes, that was like the previous halakha, right? That he gives it to Betin, and they only accept it just because they didn't want to stop. They right, wanted the, to encourage people, encourage to, people to do Teshuvah. Yeah. Mishnah Zayin, the seventh Mishnah. Zayin seven. Okay. So now it says as follows, okay? So the Tana continues again. A thief swore falsely, confessed, right? He's obligated to pay the, the principal and the fifth. Remember the Chomesh, okay? Nine, and seven, he nine, also seven. has to bring an Asham, okay? So he needs, he keep going. Number seven, this like next this. one. Yeah? Natan lo et kenen. What happens right now if he gave him the Kenan? Then he shbalo al Chomesh. He paid him the principal. And then, right, when asked for payment, he swore falsely about the fifth. Claiming that he already paid the fifth. So one more time, he has to pay the principal plus a fifth. He paid the principal. He tells the hey, pay up the fifth. I paid you. Oh, you paid me. You didn't pay me the fifth. You paid me the principal, not the fifth. So he lied about it. You have to pay a, a fifth on the fifth. You have to pay a fifth on the fifth because he already paid the principal. So he pays a fifth on the fifth. Until the principal amount by which he swallows falsely is going to be less than a shave puta. The same al would apply to a deposit, right? What does that mean? That if something was deposited to a person and he did not return it, right? And he falsely swore to deny the obligation, then he confessed, he's subject to the same laws. Again, the same thing. Shilemar says in Pasuk, It's a Pasuk. The Pasuk says if a person is going to sin by lying to his fellow friend, whether we're talking about a deposit or a loan, robbery, cheating his fellow, or he found a lost item and he denied it and he swore falsely, he has to pay the principal. He has to pay the fifth. Plus, he has to bring an asham. An asham is a guilt offering. Okay? So that's what he has to do. He shall repay the principal and the fifth. So he says, What happens if the guy comes and he has to pay the fifth and the asham and everything, but it only applies, What happens if the guy comes and says, Where's my deposit? He says, It was lost. He says, Swear. He says, Amen. Yeah, I swear. That's the affirmative, right? Now the witnesses come and they say, what are you talking about? It was lost. You ate it. He has to pay the principal. But if he came and he confessed on his own, you know if he why? Confessed, because an is a, is, a, is a benefit for him. Yes, exactly. They don't let because, him do it. Exactly. Because the Asham at the end of the day is going to give him the atonement. So therefore over here, right, the reason why confession is necessary is that the purpose of the fifth and the Asham is to give him an atonement. And there can be no atonement unless he actually repents and confesses. So if he fails to confess, then even if the witnesses testify against him, he's still exempt from the fifth and from the Hasham. He's also exempt from the special obligation to travel and he doesn't pay the owner, right? Again, because this is an atonement and therefore we're not going to give him the atonement for no reason. Have a wonderful day.